Okay, hi everyone. Um, uh, I'm Eunice Baudu, and my name is Gabby Polinas, and we are both seniors at the Marymount School of New York, and we both co-coordinate the STEM and Entrepreneurship Conference. Um, but before we begin, uh, we would like to start to say some thank yous uh, to our sponsors, especially to the Global Educational Conference for making this possible and for allowing us to present here today. Um, we would also like to know where our audience is from. Gabby and I are currently uh, in New York. We live in New York, but we would like to know where everyone else is viewing from. If you could just place um, a star on the global uh, the global map we have here. Canada, oh, that's cool. Vermont, Staten Island. Run on. Hi again. For those of you just joining, we're just currently telling uh, the group chat and also placing on the board where everyone is from, so we could get to know each other better. Yes, thank you everyone for attending our session. All right, so if that's it, Glad to see that we have a lot of people from Canada today. Um, so we can get started with our presentation. So again, my name is Eunice Daudu and my name is Gabby Polinas. We are both seniors at the Marymount School of New York and we co-coordinate the STEM Entrepreneurship Conference. So Marymount School uh, is an all-girls nursery to 12th grade independent school based in New York City on the Upper East Side. Um, we are also an Apple Distinguished School, meaning that classes kindergarten uh, through fifth grade are provided with iPads, whereas classes sixth grade to 12th grade are all provided with 11-inch MacBook Airs, ensuring that all students have access to educational technology. We also have the Student Technology Leadership Team, which was founded in 2011 at Marymount. We provide technological support for all students across the Marymount School. As a way to deliver content and updates to students, we, for example, created the Marymount Snapchat, reimagining the high school, Marymount High School News Broadcast. We also, more importantly, have the Student Technology Leadership Conference, which was founded in 2015. As students who desire, who desire to challenge, shape, and change the world through education, we believe, we believe that all students should have learning experiences that are authentic, relevant, engaging, personally transformative, and globally transformative. Following our desires to enhance and implement transformative learning, we asked ourselves, what if we created a small network of schools with technology teams to discuss our incorporation of STEM and entrepreneurship in our academic settings? We first collaborated with Steve Hargadon and Lucy Gray in January 2014, who both assisted us in expanding the scope of our conference. Together, we set up a small virtual conference and proposed the idea that it be student-led and global. And now Mr. Walters, who is our faculty moderator, we invite him to add on any additional or elaborate further on any of our any details concerning the earlier stages of um, our student technology leadership conference. Thank you, Gabby, and thank you, Eunice. I hope you can hear me. Um, I think you've hit all the important aspects of the planning stage of this. Um, our goal three years ago was to look at how schools use technology um, how students use technology in their schools. And we had originally just thought about doing a very small conference with about six other schools. 
uh, we were very fortuitous that um, Steve and Lucy came to Marymount for a visit and uh, to talk really about the Global Education Conference. But what we did was we asked the students who were involved in planning the Student Tech Conference um, if they were interested in talking to Steve and Lucy, and they said they were. And during the course of that conversation, Steve and Lucy both saw an opportunity to expand the students' idea from just a small conference of six schools that was just going to be sharing ideas to a global conference where students from across the globe uh, would be sharing how they're using technology in their schools. So uh, we were thrilled with the response that we got. We were happy with the response that we got. I would say we were probably also shocked. Um, but we also could not have been successful the last two years if it wasn't for Steve and Lucy's uh, insights and motivation and prodding and ideas. Um, they've been very, very, very helpful to us. So um, we can't thank them enough. So I'm going to turn it back over to Eunice and to Gabby. Thank you, Mr. Walters. So, You're welcome. Uh, you Due to the help of um, Steve and Lucy, uh, we decided to have our first annual conference in 2015. And it was amazingly successful for our beginning stages. Marymount School partnered with several other schools, including the West Hampton Beach School and the University School of Milwaukee for uh, our first conference. It was held on January 31st, 2015 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we had four keynote speakers, as well as 18 student presentations. We also had attendees from all over the world, including the US, Ukraine, Portugal, Brazil, Cambodia, Australia, and Malawi. The success of our first conference inspired us to continue pursuing our vision of sharing educational knowledge on the global stage. The following year, Eunice and I took on the roles as student co-coordinators of the conference. For 2016's global conference, there were four planning schools. Going clockwise, they were the Marymount School, the West Hampton Middle School, the University School of Milwaukee, and Lauriston Girls School in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, the mission of the 2016 conference uh, was to provide an international forum for the presentation, discussion, and sharing of educational technology in schools and other academic settings. Uh, this conference by students and for all was committed to fostering a better understanding of how students use technology in education to engage students, teachers, and administrators in a conversation about technology assisting teachers and administrators in understanding how students use technology both inside and outside of the classroom, and strengthening the relationship between students, teachers, and administrators about technology in the curriculum. For the conference, uh, each, each presentation was focused on one of the six strands seen above. The first strand was, was making design and innovations. Here, students talked about how they use various mediums and machines, such as 3D printers and laser cutters, uh, for an array of academic work. Our second strand was technology in schools, more specifically projects and collaborations. Students talked about different ways in which uh, they collab the students collaborated to complete projects. For example, several Marymount students talked about how they use digital programs and other softwares for a ninth grade humanities project. Our third strand was educational technology tools. Students shared their use of creative programs such as Google SketchUp, iMovie, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, among others, as a way to enhance their academics. The fourth strand was students and social media. We presented, for example, on how we use Snapchat as a way to encourage school spirit and provide updates on student life. Our fifth strand was entrepreneurship. Last year, we had a large amount of students from India harness, harnessing their interest in entrepreneurship. Apart from laying a basic understanding of entrepreneurship, these students also discussed on how startup companies can be created. 
And lastly, our sixth strand was on technology and social justice. Last year, the Young Hackers, our keynote, one of our first keynote speakers, presented on how they brought together coders through coding competitions despite social economic barriers. In order to plan for the conference, we had bi-weekly conference calls with planning schools as well as with Lucy and Steve. Each planning school volunteered to chair one committee. Each school also had to find keynote speakers. All the schools worked together to promote the conference while students submit proposals. We, the Marymount team, decided on the criteria for accepting presentations. The more the merrier. We accept more presentations than reject. Listed are the committees that each school volunteered to chair. For public relations and social media, we had a Twitter account run by the University School of Milwaukee. However, every school was responsible for promotional videos as well as promotion within their own schools and districts. And for presenter outreach, once proposals were accepted, we reached out to the individuals and informed them on the next steps. Our Marymount team reviewed and then decided on whether or not to we accepted proposals. If a proposal wasn't accepted, we sent suggestions on how to improve their proposals. This year, we accepted 90% of submitted proposals. Lastly, volunteer coordinators were responsible for making sure that each session had a presider and a moderator. In order to promote the conference, we presented at the 2015 Global Educational Conference. Here we are uh, last year, but also here we are this year and the National Coalition of Girls' Schools Global Forum. Uh, the conference was further promoted at various other conferences, such as Aussie Live in Australia and International Science, Mathematics, and Technology Education Conference in Thailand. Additionally, we had Twitter handles, which were regularly updated by our partner schools, the University School of Milwaukee. And then through the Global Educational Conference Network uh, and the RFHM Network of Schools, to which Marymount is affiliated, we encourage that the mission of our conference reach both educators and students. In order to support the conference, we raised $15,000. Last year, we used GoFundMe, but for a number of different reasons, we did not have the same success as we did with Kickstarter. For the 2017 STEAM and Entrepreneurship Conference, we will be using Kickstarter to raise funds. Furthermore, as a way to distribute mon monetary responsibilities, each school needs to raise their own contributions. The money we raise goes to supporting the infrastructure, such as the website, scheduling software, and Blackboard software, which we're using now. The money also goes to seeking out partners to promote the conference. Each school has to find one or two partners to help with public relations. All of our partners can be found on the conference website. Speaking of the website, um, here is an image shown of uh, our website, which is the studenttechnologyconference.com. We will also provide a link to the site later on uh, in the presentation. This site was designed by Steve Hargadon, and he also updates the site. On the site, proposals to present can be submitted. The conference schedule can be found, as well as contact information if you're interested to become a presenter of the con partner of the conference. Um, the site has not yet been updated for the upcoming 2017 conference, but you can take a look and browse through the recorded presentations of 2016 and 2015. Our second student technology conference took place on January 30th of 2016 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. EST. Because the conference is by students for students, we ensured that all of our presentations and keynotes were student-run. Last year's keynotes presenters were Mama Diallo from the Young Hackers, Coco Khalil, Aruna Prasad, and Victoria Constant, who was a Marymount student. We had 24 student presentations, which proves a substantial growth from our first conference. And our conference brought together people from the US, Australia, Brazil, Portugal, Canada, Germany, Mali, Cambodia, Ukraine, and Crimea. This coming year, the student 
Think Technology Conference will be rebranded as the 2017 Student STEM Scheme and Entrepreneurship Conference. We find that by rebranding the name of the conference, it allows students to have a wider range of educational topics to discuss and share on the global stage. This year, our network of planning schools are for the 2017 conference will include the West Hampton Middle School, uh, the Willard Public Schools, and hopefully any of you and any of your schools interested in working with us to plan the upcoming 2017 STEM and Entrepreneurship Conference. All are welcome. So the conference next year will be even better. The conference will now take place on March 4th of 2017, again from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. EST. We've already begun planning for the conference as of two months ago. The call for proposals opens on January 2017. If you would like to support the conference, the Kickstarter campaign will open in January. The conference is open to students from grades 6 through 12 and as well as college students. So thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to listen to our presentation today about the Student Technology Conference. Here you can see our um, contact information. Uh, so please, uh, our Twitter handle is here, as well as the website and our emails. If you would like to contact us in any way, please take the time to reach out to us. So now uh, we are opening this up to any questions people might have. Eunice Peggy has a question, which is how do you recruit students to participate in the conference? Um, what we do usually is that we find um, oh, we find in our local networks uh, students who have done anything interesting or we just find in our schools to encourage students to present on what they've been doing in their schools or outside of their schools uh, in an academic setting. Um, anyone is welcome to join and anyone is welcome to present. Um, we just have to review their proposals. Um, but we really encourage our partner schools and anyone who knows about the conference to promote it uh, within their local networks to share it, to share uh, this this um, this opportunity for students. And then Peggy, to answer your question as well, we also promoted through the National Coalition of Girls Schools, through the New York State Association of Independent Schools, through the New York City Public Schools, um, and a number of other networks. Also, any conference that yours truly goes to, um, I promote it as well. So what we've been doing is developing a list of teachers and schools that are interested in presenting and then uh, at the beginning of January we'll do a sort of a blast email through constant contact to reach out to them as well. Eunice, Kim has a question. It says, what has been the most memorable experience with the conference? Um, the most memorable experience for me uh, was uh, the day of the uh, the conference last year. Um, last year was my first, oh, well, not last year, earlier uh, this year um, in January. It was my first time um, being co coordinator for this conference, and I didn't realize just, like, how stressful it is until that day of, just, uh, of like, being a co-coordinator and leading such a large conference. Um, on that day, uh, the first keynote speaker, uh, which was supposed to present the opening time slot at 9 a.m., uh, was having a lot of technical difficulties uh, at the moment and wasn't able to connect to Blackboard Collaborate at the appointed time. So uh, that at that day, I was um, 
struggling to also to talk with the audience waiting for our first keynote speaker as well as um back channeling with um Mr. Walters and Steve Hargon and Lucy Gray about ways to um get uh, our first keynote speaker to uh present uh in the allotted time. But in the end the conference was successful and it that that experience uh really helped me to learn just to think on my feet and to be able to continue to um uh, uh, act without fear, even though there might be stressful situations going on. Abby, I don't okay, know so we have a question from James. It says, how do you spur collaboration among students before the conference? Uh, well, to spur collaboration <laughs> for students, um, we try to our best to, um, well, with our planning schools, we try our best to make sure that they work with closely with their network of schools, with their local network, and talk to their students to, in order to present and um, partake in this really amazing conference. Uh, we also, I uh, use Gabby and I continuously email our personal network just to make sure that they know about this uh, upcoming event. I don't know if Mr. Walters or Gabby have anything else to add. Um, I'll add as well that, you know, I use, um, you know, teachers are on Twitter, students are not. So I tweet pretty regularly about the conference to promote it. I think one of the challenges that we've had is that we'll have schools that will sign up to collaborate uh, to be a planning school, and we've had planning schools drop out two weeks before the conference uh, without any reason whatsoever. So again, that's something that um, that's a challenge. I think also too it's really easy for Marymount students, um, and I don't mean this as a negative, Eunice and Gabby, but <laughs> their tendency is they want to do things and do them well. So a lot of times they take the responsibility of doing everything on their shoulders. So it's often a challenge for students to uh, let go of that responsibility and let someone else take care of it. So I think uh, Eunice and Gabby have gotten much better about that, and I think as a school we've gotten much better about that as well. Um, but really the goal is that we want to make sure that we're collaborating with the other planning schools, and then the other planning schools are collaborating, as Gabby said, with their own personal networks to uh, bring presenters uh, into uh, doing presentations. I hope that answers your question. Are there any other questions for us? A question I see in the um, chat is how to share this conference with the school. Well, it's really simple. Um, just we would just really encourage you to go to any um, go to your students' most informed to tell them about uh, this upcoming conference, and also go to administrators, teachers, um, and let them know so that they can promote it with uh, they can promote it with their students and encourage them to present on any projects they're currently doing in the school, uh, and also. If you go to your administrators, um, it would also be great to uh, possibly uh, encourage them to be a partner school of this conference because we're always looking for more people uh, to help us plan this amazing conference. Kim has another question, which is, what is the pitch to students to best engage them, which I'm not sure we answered. So how do you, Eunice and Gabby, how do you get other students, for example, in our school, 
uh, to participate and do presentations. Um, what I think I say to students uh, at Marymount, at least, is that this is a great way for them to not only learn how to present um, on a global stage, um, but also to share their passions and what, they, what they're really <laughs> invested in. Um, and I think that really draws in students uh, to just talk about whatever they're doing STEM related at Marymount and just share it with everyone. And it's really amazing to see how they like get excited at times just to like, uh, or how they're frantically planning about like the best ways to do their presentations um, or to engage the audience. Yeah, I can definitely speak to that as well. Um, I can say that a lot of our students currently in our student technology team are very excited to participate in this year's STEAM and Entrepreneurship Conference. Um, just to even shadow wasn't co-coordinating the conference, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but as well as, we also mentioned to them, like, yes, we're going to help them familiarize themselves with the Blackboard Collaborate software, which is very engaging and um, certainly helpful when um, people want to further um, implement their use of um, presentations on a global set scale. Um, and also, they can um, meet new students in different ways and across the nation as well. So that's pretty exciting for them. I also think another thing that I, I like to say a lot to um, students at Marymount is that this conference is by students. So Gavin and I do a, a lot of planning for this conference, and it's for them to present. So even though uh, this conference is for all to learn and listen, but we really encourage students to be the presenters because we want to hear their voices and not let, not let um, other people, I don't know, sometimes it's daunting to have an educator talk at you and say, like, here's what, here's what the things are and here's, like, the best way to learn. But sometimes if you have a student voice sharing to you, like, this is how best I learned and these are the really cool things I found, uh, uh, cool things we did at school involving technology, STEM, um, entrepreneurship, I think it's really exciting and more engaging for everyone involved uh, to hear from the students. And I would add as well that both what Gabby and Eunice said are so true, and I think it's also important that um, students get feedback from people other than their teachers. Um, you know, they, the student will do a presentation for me, and I'm responsible for giving them a grade. But in terms of getting authentic feedback from audiences that are not in the school, uh, doing presentations for the student for our conference, I think is a really great way to do it. Um, Last February, Gabby and Eunice did a presentation down at the National Coalition of Girls Schools Global Forum. And I'm a big proponent of students presenting their work uh, at conferences and places where they normally wouldn't share their work. So I think this is a really unique uh, opportunity for students, and it's one that doesn't require travel or expense. You can sit really, you know, sit at home in your pajamas and um, share the work that you're doing and, and get feedback from people all over the world. If those are all the questions, um, answered. We just want to say thank you again to everyone for taking the time to be a part of our presentation today and listening in. We really do hope you um, take the time to possibly be a, be a partner school or um, be a partner or to just present or to be an attendee at our upcoming conference in 2017. Um, we greatly appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, guys. Hope you have a good night. Thank you.